Hello viewers, welcome to MOOC's online course on Introduction to Modern Western Art, Movements and Artists. In this week, the first week, we shall be introducing you to the various aspects of Modern Western Art. We'll try to define what is Modern Art. We'll try to see also what has gone before the modern art and also at the end of this week we will try to identify the moments which are supposed to be the beginnings, the beginning moments of modern western art. The first module today we shall be basically looking at random examples of modern western art from the entire history and see how they appear to us, to our eyes and also to our senses. The first few slides will be representations of these random samples of artworks created by various artists and at this point we are not actually concerned with the names of the artist or even the titles of the works, we are only concerned with the visual appearance, the visual look and the visual impact these works might have on our sense and perception. So, let us begin to look at some of these images. The first one for example, is a painting that appears to be completely illegible, if we are to look for some motifs, at least some elements which are recognizable. Apart from a few vertical lines, few horizontal lines and a few square or rectangular color shapes or white spaces, there is not a single element which is recognizable from the visual world around. Now, this is a very typical feature or one of the typical features of modern western art, where the motifs that you see in the painting or in the sculpture may not be recognizable, may not have any direct uh, relationship with what we observe generally in our world around. Now, the second example is modern sculpture. And once again, a sculpture, if a sculpture is supposed to represent life, represent our experiences in terms of tangible, visible, recognizable forms, then this particular sculpture fails to do so. But modern sculpture has something else to offer, something beyond recognition that may move towards what we call abstraction or may not be completely abstract, may be highly based on ideas or concepts, but may not be representational at all. And in this context, let me clear that by the term representational, we generally mean that form of visual art where the motives, the shapes, the colors, all these things can be immediately related to our normal day to day visual experiences. Now, in this case it is not possible, because the forms are quote unquote abstract, the forms are non representational. Now, let us move to the third example. Now, here at least the form is recognizable. I mean everybody can make out this is the image of a lady, a seated lady with a very colorful costume and a beautiful hat, but then what has gone wrong with her face? Why the face looks distorted? Is distortion uh, a necessary feature of modern art? Because uh, generally speaking a lot of people around do tell us that uh, modern art usually 
deals with distortion, disfiguration, non-recognizability and these are the features that make a modern art a modern art. Partly true, but this is only the, uh, the superficial story, the superficial layer of the entire complex body of modern art. But this is true that this particular painting is a very good and a very meaningful representation of modern art, not just because this was painted during the phase called modern art, but also the form, the idiom of this art is very non-traditional, very non-academic and we shall come to these terms later on again. Now, the next example is again an example of a sculpture where recognizability is there. I mean you cannot completely uh, reject the whole idea of recognition because you cannot say that this particular sculpture looks completely abstract or this particular sculpture is beyond recognition. No, it is not. At least faintly the form reminds us of a figure and if you look at the figure carefully, the form reminds us of a female figure, probably a reclining female figure. But this recognizing elements or the elements of recognition, the recognition points are very, very minimum. By and large, yes you are right, the sculpture is abstract. By and large, the sculpture is not or the sculptor here is not at all concerned with making the sculpture very recognizable. The sculptor is more concerned with the play of forms and if I resist myself from using the term distortion, then let me use for the want of a better term the idea of stylization. The sculptor is more interested in stylizing the figure to an extent when recognition is not at all important. What is important is for example, in this sculpture at least the rhythm, the pattern and the overall balance of this sculpture. Next, this is of course, in terms of recognition I would say easy to identify. Okay this form is a face, face of a man, but then again it is hardly realistic. I mean in the sense, if you look at the proportion, if you look at the scale, if you look at the anatomical proportion and the details, this particular image does not conform to the reality. It conforms to an idea or let me say uh, an interpretation of reality and yes, modern art to a great extent is an interpretation of reality rather than an imitation of reality. And when we discuss in our next module the prehistory of modern art, we are going to discuss this issue that how in pre-modern art the artists were more concerned with the a kind of imitation of the reality, whereas in the modern art, the artist is not at all concerned with the imitation of reality, rather they are more interested in interpreting reality in their own way. For example, look at this sculpture, again the scale is of course, we have seen huge scale sculptures also in the traditional western art. That is not the issue, but what about the form? Anybody can ask what does this sculpture mean? And when you ask this question, it implies that you are not able to identify the form. You are not able to make out whether this particular form represents a human being or an insect or a tree or a plant or something that we do not know of anything is possible. So, in other words, modern western art has expanded the possibilities of subject matters. Modern art has expanded 
the possibilities of interpreting the reality. But again, you may also come across something like this, where the image is not very far off from realism. It is looks like a very ordinary simple painting of a platter full of fruits kept on a table. All the fruits are recognizable, but then there is something which tells us that this is an example of modern art and this cannot, certainly cannot belong to the traditional western art. Now, why? We shall look at this painting again later and discuss what makes this apparently simple and more realistic painting also a, a modern art. Or for example, this one, there is hardly any distortion involved in this painting, but a simple picture of a snowy, of a wintry landscape. But then, this is something that was not possible by any artist from the pre-modern era. Again, the same question can be asked in the context of this painting too. What makes this painting also a modern art? Because the term modern art evokes whole lot of ideas as I have already told you. Ideas like distortion, disfiguration, abstraction, but this painting and the previous one. In these two paintings, we do not see any distortion, we do not see any abstraction, we do not see any disfiguration, yet these paintings are also very strong examples of modern art. In fact, at this point, I would like to say that uh, the range of modern art is pretty vast. On the one hand, you may have examples of paintings and sculptures where the forms are more close to nature, where the forms are more close to realism. And again, you can also have examples of like the first one we saw at the beginning of our session today, a painting which is completely beyond recognition, which is an abstract painting. Or look at this one. This is also fairly simple painting in the sense that we can make out. This is a landscape or field, we can see the sun behind, we can see some hillocks, but now we are not simply looking at the recognition or the realism, we are also looking at the texture like the previous one also. Here as well as here in this painting. The subject matters may be fairly simple, but what is very, very non-traditional is the way you treat your subject matter, the way you handle your brush, the way you treat your surface. These particular aspect of treatment, of rendering, of application of color, the way you hold your tools, the way you apply your pigment, these things can also make a piece of art a modern art. So, it is not necessarily subject, not always the form, but could also be the application of paint, the treatment of the surface. But here it is a subject matter, because we have never seen something like this, an entire painting devoted to most common people, very, very ordinary people like here we have these three women who are gleaning crops from their fields. So, in modern art we beside very visible shifts in the form, very extremely radical shifts in the treatment, we also see very significant shifts in the subject matter, the way you look at your time, the way you look at your society. Because for a long time, art has been mostly addressing 
the people on the top layer of the society, the rich people, the powerful people, the religious authority. But now in modern art, we have plenty of paintings and sculptures where the subject matter is the ordinary people, the common poor. For example, this one. And a common person, not in a state of necessarily pleasure or happiness. Here, as you can see, this person is in a state of anguish, pain, suffering. So, common man in the state of suffering is now occupying the subject matter of modern art, beside other subjects of course, or for that matter this man. In this painting you can see the person, the figure who is in the foreground is in a state of uh, anguish and agony to the extent that the entire painting is in a state of anguish. I mean the treatment of the surface, look at the bridge, look at the colors, look at the flow of the brush. So, the anguish or the agony or the suffering is felt not necessarily on the expression or on the body of the figure, but also in the environment, also in the color palette also in the organization of the elements in the painting which is called composition. So, in other words modern art is gradually moving towards redefining what is called the art language, where the subject matter or the feeling or the emotion can be felt not only in the form of the human being, but also in the environment also in the entire composition and this is what makes a modern art a modern art or for example, this one. The subject could be fairly old in the sense this particular image is a take or let us say an interpretation of an age old image or idea of Adam and Eve, but here you do not get the traditional Christian iconography in this painting. You see the couple Adam and Eve in a very different context, in a black and white context, where uh, you cannot even see their faces properly. There is no such sensuousness that is expected from the body of the Adam and Eve. So, this work of art is pretty modern in the way it has interpreted an old theme. So, this is also possible, there can be an interpretation of an old theme or for that matter this one, nothing old, nothing traditional, there is not a single reference to our past. When you look at a painting like this, any viewer for that matter would be able to relate very easily to our visual culture we are surrounded with it is in that sense, it is highly contemporary in its feel, it is very modern in its look, because this is the kind of patterns and designs we come across in our costume, in our furnitures and in the entire design industry. So, modern art in examples like this could be also an extension of our visual culture, not necessarily something very special, something that is alienated from our visual culture, but very much a part of it. Modern art could also be as this example shows, a form, a work of art that is driven by the available technology, very advanced technological facilities have given a lot of ideas, a lot of possibilities to modern art. So, the relationship between technology and modern art, scientific developments and modern art is extremely crucial. This needs to be explored properly, which we shall do in the later classes. So, eventually we come back to this question then what is modern art? Now, as I have already suggested that it is very difficult to define modern art 
in a singular sentence or in a single phrase. If not for anything else, but at least for its variety, its huge range of examples, the way the various artists have explored modern art, their innovativeness, all these things make it highly difficult for us to define modern art in a singular way. Even a quick browse through the history of modern western art reveals that it consists of an immense variety, variety of forms, variety of styles, variety of techniques and of course, a huge variety of concepts. Then this diversity makes it impossible to define modern art in one singular term, it is impossible. So, how do you approach? Still a definition is often required to understand the conceptual framework or the historical framework or the ideological framework of modern art. Now, in general modern art posed itself as a serious challenge to the past. This is true to all forms of modern art, irrespective of their stylistic and conceptual differences. They posed a, itself as a serious challenge to the past, to what is traditional. So, the traditional art forms were debunked, they were challenged, they were often discarded, the authority of religion, age old social order was questioned and creative freedom was upheld to pave way for innovations. So, modern art is highly innovative, the stylistic and technical diversity evident in modern art is amazing. Beginning from the mid 19th century, modern art evolved rapidly and fast, really very very fast over a period of 100 and 150 years through a series of art movements and radical innovative ideas. Movements are important in modern art, movements organized by group of artists, spearheaded by maybe one or two artists, but again along with art movements in modern art, we also have individual artists, somebody likes Pablo Picasso. Vincent van Gogh, Henry Matisse, Giacometti, there are Henry Moore, there are lot of artists, individual artists who beside participating in group movements have also contributed immensely to the development of modern art individually. So, the rise of individual artists is also a very important feature of modern western art. Now, in spite of this mind boggling diversity, all kinds of modern art, individual or specific movements are linked with certain common factors. So, we are not trying to exactly define modern art in one sentence, but let us try to look at some common features shared by all forms of modern art. Number one, modern art or modernism is integrally associated with the industrial revolution and technological advances from the late 18th and 19th century onwards. Technological and scientific developments opened up a whole range of possibilities for the modern artists, very important as I have already mentioned. Political and social uprising, a new social consciousness, political revolutions and a strong urge to relate art with the common society, this has also been a commonly shared idea in the modern art. Now, modern paintings like this for example, are clear examples of such works where the rise of industrial societies, urban middle class and a new modern life are the main subject matters. So, modern art is and obviously integrally related to modern society or modernism in general. And as we all know that industrial revolution, technological advances, scientific developments have been the hallmarks of modernity or modernism, modern art also shared and took advantage of this new situation. And we have subject matters like this, where the new industrial towns occupy the new paintings, they become the center of focus for many artists. So, these subject matters obviously bring whole lot of changes in the technique and also in the form of art. For example, this one also, 
We have never seen something like this before, for obvious reasons. We did not have chimneys, we did not have this industrial township, we did not have migrant laborers and workers, we did not have this working class people in numbers, in great numbers visible around. So, they now become this new subject matters for the new painters of modern life or for example, this one. Now, these examples are from very early phase of modern art. So, right from the beginning one can say that artists are paying attention to depict the emergence of a new life situation, of a new society driven by industrialization, driven by the rising cities and modernity and new urban situations and obviously, new kind of people. These people like the working class, middle class, they were never featured, they were never addressed in the pre-modern art with the due importance. They did appear, but only marginally. Or a peaceful, quiet, lucid image of a modern life as you can see in this painting. Almost a direct and a very clear depiction of modern life and the subject matter itself is uh, enough to let us know that this painting is a modern painting. There is no doubt about that. And significantly modern or modern art went on to innovate the most radical methods of painting including all forms of abstract art. Thus, modern art not only cha challenged the subject matters of the past, the past art, but it also challenged the language of art. And this is again a common feature to most of the examples of modern art that they were not only concerned with the new possibilities of technique new possibilities of subject matter, but they were also concerned with altering the language of painting itself or language of sculpture itself. So, language of art changed to a great extent in the modern art. Modern art is about a multiple shifts, shifts happening in different layers in the subject matter, in the technique, in the method, in the idea and definitely redefining the language, what we understand as art. It clearly claims once and for all that art is no more about replicating the vis visible nature, the visual reality. It is about interpreting your experiences. It also could be about your inner layers of your mind. It could also be about ideas, concepts, but not necessarily and certainly not a replication of the reality. In that sense, modern art not only challenges the past art or the tradition, but it challenges the perception of the viewers, us as well. So, the question is no more about what is modern art or how do we define modern art. The question can also be asked um, like how modern art is to be viewed and perceived. Now, the whole question turns towards us, how and this remains the vexed question and in fact throughout this course as we keep exploring and following the different changes in the modern western art continuously and repeatedly we shall be coming back to the problem of visual perception. Because all said and done at the end of the day modern art is a big problem to our visual perception. We need to change that as well. Thank you.